So last time we're we were we we're, you know going through some uh some of the uh sort of finer points of uh this equilibrium outcome. Okay, um and I think this is this is basically okay. So the slides go up to this point too. All right, I I haven't put the switch pointer in the slides. That's living in the long form document. Okay. Um so let me just open that you know, uh, reference here. Okay, so yeah, the, the in the creative instruction section four point one, that's basically where the social planner is. That's what I'm going to be going over today. Okay, so um, but the last the last thing we did last time was was thinking about growth rates. Okay, so thinking about how do you how do you go from a model specification, um, where kind of you know things are happening, there's Poisson processes going off all over the place and. They result in certain outcomes like a step size lambda. How do you go from that and your knowledge of, of the quality aggregator Q into an actual growth rate? Okay, and so you know, first we know that you know, so we, we can find the we find the growth rate of Q, and, and beyond that, we know how to how to get from Q, growth rate of Q to growth rate of everything else. In this case, it's very simple because y is equal to p times Q to, to production labor times Q, uh, and if we're in a steady state then P is not moving around. And so it's just Y is equal to the growth rate of Q. All right, so um, yeah, so so it, it, in this case, it maps, it maps fairly cleanly into uh, things that we're interested in, like growth of output per capita, which is also the growth of, growth of output um, and the growth of consumption, which is, you know, they're, they're, those two are equal, okay? Um, yeah, and then, and then in terms of the mechanics of actually getting GQ, all right, it's just, you know, think about, you know, take take the approach of looking at the the time derivative of the log of Q uh, using this discrete time approximation, and bringing that delta down to zero. Okay, so um, yeah, I think that's pretty straightforward, and you can you know you can kind of generalize it if you have multiple things that can happen. You just sort of add them in. Their interaction terms are going to be of order delta squared or less, and so uh, you can you know ignore them uh, for our purposes. Okay, so. So again, you get the sort of separability that you usually arrive at um, in continuous time. Um, yeah, and and you know if you had a random step size, you know it's just a matter of taking the expectation. So so things usually end up being pretty pretty linear. Okay, now um, you might not always be able to use the, the log derivative trick. You might have to to just take you know Q head on and say what's the derivative, uh, or what's not what's the derivative, but what's the value. Um, in the next time step, uh, so so for instance, if you had, you know, this is the the log log aggregator, aggregator um, you know, uh, in, in some other world, I want green. Okay, in some other world, you might say, okay, well, we have like um, Q is equal to this, you know some integral of all these QIs. Uh, except maybe the QIs are raised to some, you know, epsilon power, right? So like our original aggregator, it's something like this, di. Okay, so so maybe it looks like that. Okay, you know, in that case, you kind you can kind of do the same thing though, in the sense of you can express, you can you can move that exponent over to the other side, okay, and express it like this, um, right? So you can you can move that to the other side, just like we did the log. Um, that's the integral there. That's a zero. Okay, just like we did with the log. Okay, and then think about what's you know. Um, well, okay. Well, actually, you could you could take the log of that too. Actually, you could take the log of that if you want. Um, yeah, but but uh, I guess it's good to have the integral linear. Okay, because now you can say okay, stuff's gonna happen to product lines at independently across the product line, right? So you, you're going to, you would get, you know, with, you know, some probability delta tau, something happens with some probability one minus delta tau, something happens. So when you have the integral, like not raised to any power, I guess that's kind of the ideal state because then you can do these probability, probability calculations. They kind of come out cleanly and then uh, you can go from there. Okay. So in this case, um, yeah, I mean the the so in this case you 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 you'd actually run along similar lines to this. Okay, so you'd have like a delta tau case, you had a one minus delta tau case, and then uh, you you'd be able to factor things out actually um, multiplicatively. Okay, so 
Uh, I'm not going to go through it. Maybe, I don't know, um, maybe we can do it later, but it, it's a little heavy on the algebra, but you can work through it and eventually you'll get, you know, you'll, you'll be able to take a limit. Okay. You'll be able to divide through and kind of take a limit. Okay. Um, it's, it's, it's a couple steps ahead, right? So you're probably not gonna be able to say it right away, but if, if you want, you could, it's, it's, it's a good, uh, you know, practice problem. Okay. Just say, okay, this is our aggregator. Let's find the growth rate. Okay. So maybe at the end I can do that. Um, pen, but I do need to get to the social planner in the meantime. So either, either at the end or maybe we could do it, you know, uh, in the review class, which would be on, on Tuesday. Okay. So, um, yeah. All right. So then, uh, let's forge ahead. All right. So, so, but, but at the end of the day, you know, the, the kicker there was, okay, well, we found out how to get G. G was log of lambda times tau. We had found tau. That's, you know, because tau is gamma times R and R is sort of our main equilibrium variable. So, so it's just, you find R, find tau, find G, you're all set. All right. Um, okay. But now we, now we want to think about social planning. We want to think about efficiency. Okay. And, uh, yeah, and so I guess um, you know, ex ante, what, what, what are we gonna, what would we think about efficiency? Well, um, you know, there there is this creative destruction process. Okay, so you're getting booted out. When you look at the discount rate, it says basically rho plus tau. Okay, whereas the social planner doesn't really care. Uh, and when I say discount, when you look at the the value function, it was like pi over rho plus tau. Okay, so that was that was the firm was was operating like that was their discount rate. Um, which is larger than the, the sort of social discount or the utility, utility based discount rate of, of just row, uh, which is what the social planner is going to about. So the social planner, they don't care about Tao. I mean, they don't care who owns the product line. They're just, they just, um, they're just doing it all, you know, uh, as, as a central planner, basically. Right. So, um, that, you know, Tao is, is of no import to them. Uh, so they're just, they're just operating with the row discount rate. So they're going to be um, appropriately, you know, uh, time discounting things, whereas firms are going to be relatively short-sighted, uh, which which means that you're going to incorporate less of this uh, infinite stream of social surplus generated by your research and your innovations. Um, and so you're going to underinvest. Okay, so the, the, the short-sightedness clearly is going to lead to an underinvestment. Okay, uh, just in and of itself. Okay. Um, but there's another component, okay, uh, which is counteracting that, which is that, um, you know, it, it's actually pretty lucrative to do an innovation of almost any size, okay? Even if you do a really small incremental innovation, you kick out the incumbent, right? And you get, you get if you do a 1% innovation, you get 101% of the, of the original profits. So you get the whole original profits they were getting, you get a little bit more because you actually... Well, actually, didn't want that. Well, actually, that's not entirely true because, um, in terms of revenues, let's say that's what you get. Okay, you still need to pay the cost, but in terms of revenues, you get the entire old revenue stream, uh, and and uh, some incremental improvement. Okay, and so, but basically, the result is that there's going to be some disconnect between sort of the profit level and the social surplus level. Okay, and we'll see. Uh, let's see. We'll, we'll, we'll be able to see, we'll be able to visualize that later on. Okay. And then we'll also, we'll see, we'll see kind of an algebraic interpretation of, of what that disconnect looks like. Okay. Um, all right. So then for the, but, so let's, we're going to solve the social plan and then we'll go back and compare what it looks like and then see like, how does that match up with our intuition? Okay. So, um, social planner. All right. So they're, they're, uh, let's see. So, so the, we have a similar, um, situation as we had last time where it's like our, our optimization problem is it's basically a labor allocation problem all right we have a bunch of labor it can either do research or it can do production and if it does production it can actually do production in, in a bunch of different product lines okay um and you know last time uh sorry in the in the romer setting we we first did it assuming equal levels of production across different product lines, because that's sort of like things were symmetric ex ante in the Romer setting. And it, and it made sense and it made our lives easier. Um, and then, you know, we did it and we got some answer and it, was, it turned out to be right. Um, and then uh, I think then we went back and did it. Okay, well, let's not assume that. Let's assume you, you, you actually make this full allocational choice of how much you put in each product line and also how much research do you do conditional on uh, subject to uh, labor uh, constraint, uh, total labor constraint. 
okay? Um, <clears throat> and we got the same thing, all right? So that turned out to be a correct, you know, assumption uh, from the get-go. Now, in this case, things are not totally symmetric, right? Because remember, yi is equal to qi times li. So you might think, well, maybe I want to put more labor into uh, product lines that have higher Q, right? Um, and that's that's an intuition, okay? Um, I guess if you look at, yeah, I mean, I mean that that that, that you might think that, okay. I think in the end, we're going to get the result that um, you actually do still want to equalize. Okay, but, but you know, ex ante, you know, they, there is an asymmetry here. Okay, certain product lines have higher productivity than other product lines. Okay, and actually, if you think about, this is somewhat of an inside, if you think about um, what is the, what it, I, we haven't really talked about what Q, the Q distribution looks like. We talked about Q, right? And how that's growing over time, right? You know, there's gonna be some growth rate G is equal to log of lambda times tau. Okay, so we talked about the, the aggregate of Q, but then what about, you know, sort of the, I guess let's call it Q, the vector, so the, sort of the, you know, Hilbert space style vector of, of all these Qs, QIs, all right? Um, what's happening with that? Well, that, that's gonna have some distribution, okay? So you can think about, you know, some F of Q uh thing all right um that's going to have some distribution you can also think about um like a f of uh i don't know we'll call it a q hat where q q hat is q hat i is q i over q so the the normalized relative q value right so what we do know excuse me what we do know about um q's is that they're all growing Sort of well, they're not all growing, but they're they're kind of moving along over time, right? And then there's some distribution around that mean. Okay, so um, so so if if you just thought about f of q, the raw distribution, that's something that it's moving out to infinity over time. So it's it's not like stable, right? But if you think about q i over q, that's normalized, right? So so q is growing over time, and each individual q is kind of on average growing. So this is the thing which um uh is kind of stable okay because you've normalized it basically and so you can talk it, it's it's a little bit more reasonable and maybe we should use it like f hat too uh to talk about this distribution in, in hat you know in, in normalized terms okay but either way there's some distribution okay um and, and actually if you think about what's the dynamic for an indi individual qi you know basically for each at each time period you know either with probability delta tau, you know, you get, oh no, uh, with probability delta tau, you get, um, you know, a, a lambda multiplier. Okay, or with one minus, with one minus delta tau, okay, and, and you, you, well, then you get just one. Okay, I don't know how I should draw this, I'll try like a circular. Okay. So either multiply by lambda or you multiply by one. Okay. Um, if you think about qi hat, all right, that normalized value with normalized q with probability delta tau, you're gonna you're gonna move up. I guess we don't really need that x. So let's, let's let's get rid of this x. Either lambda, you got one. Okay, you're gonna move up by lambda, but you're also always kind of getting dragged down at rate g. Okay, so q is going up. So that no matter what, that's gonna kind of drag you down. But then sometimes you get an innovation, so you go back up. Okay. And then with probability one minus delta tau, you're just gonna get dragged down at rate one over one plus delta g. So it's approximate, right? So because Q is growing in the normalized space, you're always getting dragged down. And then occasionally you you, you innovate and you get you go back up, but then you keep going back down. So this is the process, okay? Um, and then if you think about it, and so so that's a mul multiplicative sort of random block, okay? If, if you thought about, say, like, you know, like log of, of qi hat, okay, then you got a similar thing with probability delta tau. Uh, you sort of have a log of lambda minus g, which let's just, let's say it's positive for, for small enough um, <clears throat> delta. And then, uh, 
with probability one minus delta tau, you're going to go minus log of, so this is going to be positive, minus log of one plus delta g. Okay, so, all right, so, um, well, what does that mean? Uh, well, it means that in, in, especially if you think about it in this logarithmic space, this is basically a random block. You know, for, dis for discrete time steps, you know, let's say delta tau is 10%. 10%, you, you go up, you, you, you jump up, there's a 90% chance you, you're going to slowly jump down. Okay, so it's asymmetric in terms of probabilities and, and jump sizes, but it's a random block nonetheless. Okay, so um, what does that mean? Well, it, it, there's no converging force. Right? There's nothing put, pulling these back together. Okay, they're doing they're just random walking in logarithmic space. Okay, and we know that basically just kind of intuitively a random walk without anything pulling you back towards the mean, it's just going to spread out forever. Okay, you're going to get uh, over time the variance of these Q's goes up and there's nothing pushing it down. Okay, uh, and so that Q distribution is just going to keep spreading out. All right. And so uh, that's it. So so it's fine. Okay, I mean it's it's somewhat non-ideal. All right, because maybe it doesn't seem to to match up with how we think about the world. Certainly, uh, but it's fine in the sense that the model still holds together. Okay, so because basically the the only thing um, well not really I mean Q doesn't really matter for the model. Okay, we get an outcome that's basically independent of Q. All right. Um, like it, it's Q is driving the growth and everything, but it, it, but essentially the only thing that matters is capital Q. The fact that underneath that, the variance is, is, is going up indefinitely is fine because the mean or the, the Q aggregator just moves along deterministically at, at growth rate G. Okay. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so, and, and, but, but. Also, over time, that growth is increasingly driven only by. Um, let, me think, let, me make, let me make sure this is true. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I'm trying to think if. if so, so, but what's happening is some some Qs are going, rel some normalized Q values are going to zero, and some normalized Q values are going to infinity. It's just a bifurcation because of this random walk. Um, I see. I think you still need the the low value ones because. You don't want them to go to zero. You know, you, you, hitting zero here is bad because we have anodic conditions, right? If you hit zero on any individual Q, uh, this is like a Cobb Douglas aggregator. The log log thing is, is Cobb Douglas, basically, except with a continuum of factors. Okay. Uh, if you hit zero on, on any, um, let's say, uh, non negligible subset of Qs, you're going to get log of zero, which is log, which is minus infinity. Um, add it into an integral, which is then exponentiated, so you're going to get zero, right? So you hit zero on sort of like a, you know, me, ignore, you know hand wavy measure theory. If you hit zero on, on a non negligible fraction of i's, things are bad. You have zero output. That's that's basically not up. But it also means that you have infinite marginal product uh, at, when you're close to zero. Okay, so it, it really is Cobb Douglas like. Um, but yeah, so you can't just throw those out because you've got the anodic. You can't throw out the, the cues that are. Have a low uh, productivity because it's not a stuff, um, but but they do have a low productivity. Okay. That being said, QI itself never goes down, right? It's just this is just the relative productivities, the relative values of QI over Q. So QI itself it keeps going up uh, at some some rate. Okay. So seems weird, seems problematic. It's kind of problematic from a sort of empirical standpoint, um, and, and you can. <clears throat> You can you can introduce easily very easily things to to correct for this okay they make the model a little more complicated but you could have a diffusion you know where it's like okay well clearly if, if i'm i'm making fusion reactors and you know i have sky cities like in the jetsons or whatever i could i probably also somehow technology diffused across um domains such that i can like make a toaster too right so Although I probably don't even need a toaster in that case. I have something more advanced, right? So, but you, you know, you're not going to expect these technological domains to diverge that much. There's going to be diffusion. If, if things advance in physics or if they advance in math, they're going to advance in physics and chemistry probably because there's common tools across all of those. Okay. So, so, 
um, the, essentially what I'm saying is that you can introduce diffusion across, say, the product lines, okay, such that um, uh, you, you, you could just put in a term that, you know, basically um, the, the productivity of these low, the, the product, you could put in a thing where the productivity of the QI sort of creeps up if they're too low, okay, just sort of like through some soft, some uh, continuous diffusion process, okay, so uh, and that would look like, I mean, it would, it, it wouldn't change that much, really. Okay, it would, it would just be something you add in to, to introduce additional realism to uh, to the model. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it might make things, you, you have to be careful about how you account for all of this. Okay, because if you have diffusion, is that changing profit, is it changing what firms do and stuff like that? But but it's it, there's no sort of fundamental issue there. Okay. Um, all right, so that's on the, that's on the side. I just remembered, to, you know, it's important to talk about so this distributional stuff. Okay, um, and and it's it's a little funky in this case, um, but it's it's uh, not not um, catastrophic. Okay, so um, all right, but let's go, let's go back to uh, this this social planner. All right, so the social planner they're facing this production function. Okay, and then. So I, got a, I got a baby monitor here. Uh, they're facing this production function, okay, at the intermediate level, okay, and then they have, uh, you know, the uh, goods aggregator, a lot of YI. Okay. Um, and then, and we know that, well, you know, we know that this is, just plug it in, I guess, zero to one, QI, LI, DI. Okay, so now we have, you know, log of Y directly. Okay, um, and then we can actually, uh, we can split this into, um, you know, these, these two different terms. Okay, essentially splitting that logarithm additively and also through the integral. Okay, so then we're going to get log of QI DI plus zero to one uh, log of yeah okay so um, all right so that's our log YI okay and I'm gonna have some more room here in a second okay all right so um, so already here you can see um, let's see. Well, you, you can see there is sort of a separability going on, okay? Um, and if you think about, and, and especially since we know, you know, we're, we're going to be often looking at a situation where our utility function is logarithmic, okay? So really, you know, this this kind of is utility in a logarithmic world, okay? So you can see that there's a separability, all right? Which makes you think maybe, um, maybe the, you know, if, if you think about the marginal utility, Right of changing an li, it's not going to depend on uh, qi, right? If you think about this, this isn't the exact right calculation, but think about something like this. What's the utility effect of of putting in a little bit more labor to a particular product line? And what it's it's going to be, you know, kind of proportional to one over li, right? It's, it's going to it's infinitesimal, but it, it's infinitesimal proportional to one over li. Okay, so and then that doesn't involve Q. Okay, so you kind of still expect uh, once you work through the algebra, you know, then you start seeing like maybe maybe we do get the symmetry result again anyway. Okay, so um, yeah, uh, yeah, and so and then um, let me make sure I get it right. Uh, If you if you move away from logarithmic utility, okay, um, you still you know if you move away from logarithmic utility, it's still kind of true, okay, because you know what this equation here is a reflection. You know if you exponentiate that, okay, so first it says that log of y, you know, is, is the log of q, right? Because remember that thing over there is the log of q, um, plus this this whole integral thing. Which we don't really have a name for, right? Because the allies can be different. 
okay? Um, and so then this means that y is equal to q times this sort of log log aggregation of li. Okay, so you can see, you know, e, um, before, because we had that the li's were all equal, that was just, that was p, all right? Because li was equal to p. You sort of factor out those integrals and exponentials and you realize that that means that it's just p. Okay, so you get y equals qp. If the allies are potentially different, okay, because as a social planner, we could choose whatever we want as long as it satisfies the, the labor constraint, um, then uh, then you get this, okay? But you still get a multiplicative separability, okay? And so if you think about, you know, del y, del li, well, you're going to get q over li, then infinitesimally still, but you'll get q over Li. You get the Q, which which effectively what it, what it means is the Q kind of modifies all productivities because of the way this aggregator works. Okay, it's inherently you know they're all all, all these goods are multiplied together. It's like a Cobb Douglas. They're all kind of multiplied together, except there's a continuum, so it's a little hard to think about. But that's how it works. Okay, so they're all kind of connected. Okay, and that's why you get this um, this effect. All right, um, I guess uh, it's kind of like how in in the Cobb Douglas world. If you have a, a capital augmenting technology and labor augmenting, you can just factor that out to the front, right? It's just it, it's equivalent to neutral technology because in Cobb Douglas world, you can always factor these these you know a a k a l stuff a z stuff out to the front. Here, this is, this really is a continuous sort of Cobb Douglas, okay, with a continuum of inputs. So it, it's sort of hard to write, but that's what it is. And so you can factor out all the cues to the front, okay, and that's what, exactly what we're doing here, okay. So um, it's it's a it's a product of the the particular log log aggregation function that we have. Okay. Um, okay. Why so you then, call it log yeah, log? Uh, because basically, it's like here. So anytime you because have we like, integrate over them. Oh, yes, because you, it's log on the left and a log you log on the left. Okay. So it, you, yeah, I mean, it, it really it, it's exponential log, I guess maybe that would be another a more accurate term because then it's like y equals this. Yeah, but it's just when I say log log, it's just you have that that type of aggregator where the log of the aggregate equals the integral of the logs. Yeah. Um, okay, so then, uh, all right, so so that's that's the argument for the symmetric output outcome, okay? Um, I'm gonna do, just like last time, I'm gonna do the social planet problem assuming symmetry we, if we have time later, maybe we can go back, but it's it's going to be symmetric. You can do the, the go out and do it in, in detail, writing out the integrals using Leibniz's rule and all that stuff, and you'll get this symmetric outcome. Okay, so we're just going to jump to that. Okay, so Hamilton. I feel like if I had seen Hamilton, I could make a Hamilton joke here, but I have not seen Hamilton. I probably should, but things are busy. Um, okay, so uh, Hamilton, Ian, in this case, we're going to do Hamiltonian. Um, uh, so what's what's going to what's this going to look like? Okay, so I mean, we, we basically, you know, uh, we're, we're going to assume, you know, U of C, it's log of C, just just making sure we have our background assumption here, we're doing logarithmic utility. Right, and we, we sort of shown, okay, so we're going to also assume that symmetry thing. So we're going to have at our disposal, you know, y equals q times p, okay, which is q times uh, 1 minus r in our case, all right? And then also we know that c equals y, right? So we're going to have a lot, you know, the utility term is going to be a log of y, okay? And so then, you know, the, 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 the whole flow utility term is going to be... Uh, you know, the log of QP, which is the log of Q, one minus R. Okay, so that's our that's our flow utility term. They're just, you know, assume symmetry, you get a very simple linear production function, exploit the fact that P equals one minus R, and you're all set, okay? Um, all right, and then we can, we're gonna separate that out logarithmically in a second, but let's, let's keep moving here. Um, and so then, but, but I guess, you know, maybe I should, the thing that we start with is, you know, u of c plus mu times uh, q dot, okay? 
right? So Q is our Q is our state variable. Okay, I guess I didn't. I also didn't mention that Q is our state, and R is our control. Okay, so it's like before, except instead of n uh, being our state variable, Q is our state variable. Okay, so otherwise it's similar. Okay, and so then. <clears throat> You know, what is uh, the, the last thing I guess we would need to know in that case is what is Q dot? Okay. Um, and that's going to be, well, you know, it's just going to be, um, well, okay. We, we can, we can work through it. So, so we know that Q dot, because, because here we still, <clears throat> we're still operating as the social planner, we're operating this, this type of technology where you invest R you invest a certain amount of R in research, that leads to a rate gamma R, tau equals gamma R of, of successful research, of, of new innovations, okay? And each of those increments uh, a random QI by a certain factor, multiplicative factor of lambda that's greater than one, okay? So I, actually all the, all that's still true here, okay? And the growth rate expression, that G <clears throat> is uh, one plus lambda times tau, all that's true, okay? So Q dot, um, Right. And so, so, but here, you know, the, the growth rate, right, is, is uh, log lambda tau. So that means that, you know, the Q dot is going to be Q times that growth rate. So here, so, so the growth rate is that thing on the right, log lambda plus tau. All, all we're doing here is just moving that Q over, right? Because we want, we, we're interested in Q dot, not the growth rate of Q exactly. Okay. So it's, it's a proportional process. Okay. Um, and then we know that tau is just gamma r. So this is q. No, let me. No, let me do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put the log lambda out front. Okay, log lambda, uh, gamma r q. Let's do it like that. Okay, but you know, I, I switched up the order. But you have q. You got gamma. You got r. You got log lambda. Okay, so those are all together. All right. Um. But, but you know, but essentially this, so what is this using in the background? It's using G is log lambda tau and tau is gamma R, right? Those are the two things. We're just kind of plugging those in um, and that's what we, we get. All right, and then, then I guess like you know, Q, Q dot is, Q dot over Q is equal to G. Okay, so these three things combined, that gets us our, our Q dot equation in terms of basically R and Q, which are a state variable and our controller. Okay, so that's what we get here. So we're gonna Q log of lambda, gamma, R, when I said Q, mu, I was, uh, what, sorry, when I said Q, I meant mu, mu log of lambda, gamma, R, Q. Okay, so there's a bunch of terms floating around there, but they're all important. Okay, um, now, this is, this is it. Okay, so this is our Hamiltonian. It's, uh, only a function of parameters of our choice variable R and our state variable Q, which is what we want. Okay. Nothing else floating around. That's important. Okay. And and mu, our our our, our uh, <clears throat> multiplier. Okay. If you have anything else floating around, that's that that would be bad. All right. We need to make sure we we're we're doing the full, you know, social planners problem. Okay. Um, all right. And uh, and then I guess the other thing is, you know, just looking at a log function. Well, you can see that that's going to split into log of Q plus log of one minus R. Okay. And then this is going to be the same. So yeah, I mean, it just makes our lives a little bit easier for the, doing the, the derivatives and everything. Okay. So, um, but also you can kind of see that, um, that, you know, it's, that it's really just that proportionality manifesting itself again. Okay. All right, so now okay, now we need to uh, optimize this. Okay, it's not and it's not so bad. All right, so um, you know, condition one, first order condition zero is h sub r. Okay, so we're taking it with respect to our control variable h sub r, uh, or just r rather. Um, so we're getting minus one over one minus r. Okay, and then plus mu log lambda gamma q nice all right um in the notes i'm i i, I write uh lambda tilde for log lambda 
it's uh, I'm just gonna write log lambda every time. Uh, okay, so um, so that's our first order condition. Um, well, I mean, it doesn't. It's, it's not super informative uh, to me at least at this point, but we can at least write you know one over one minus r equal to mu log of lambda uh, gamma q. All right. Um, you know, I guess uh, <clears throat> you you can see all right. So so uh, you can see that if you think about this this is first order condition. So typically we think about these as determining your choice variable given a state q and uh, a multiplier mu. Okay, which which basically that's what this equation does. Um, and you can see that you uh, you know there there the outcome will look like that that we saw in equilibrium in the sense of you might go all the way down to r equals zero. And if that thing on the right is, so it's essentially the thing on the, you know, if you think about this as a little mini graph, the thing on the left, okay, is it starts at one and then it goes off to infinity. And then the thing on the right is just constant. Okay, so it might look like that, in which case you have a unique inter intersection. It might also look like this, in which case, you know, you just kind of, go to zero and call it quits. All right, which means you have no research. So you you might hit that zero research boundary still as a social planner, although you might do it differently at a different point uh, than the equilibrium. Uh, if you don't though, then there's some unique R, okay? So that's true at any point, right? Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so in, in, in general, you know, Q's moving around, Mu's moving around, and we're just, we're just choosing R and, and hope for the best, right? It's going to turn out that basically um, mu times q is going to be constant, okay? And we're going to just get 1r, and it's going to be that way forever. Okay, so um, let's let's discover that, all right? Okay, and that's going to come from our equation describing the movement of mu, okay? Uh, all right, so, so here, you know, the way I usually write this is uh, mu lambda minus mu dot is equal to h q. All right. So what do we got here? Um, all right, so, you know, with, the, with that one plus log log of q, or the log q plus one, plus log of one minus r, you, know, you can't, you can't throw away that log q. Okay, so sometimes the utility is like you get a constant and so you can throw it away. You kind of need it because you need to know, it's important how q is moving around actually because Q is your productivity, all right? So you can't throw it away like you, you might sometimes do with a utility term that's sort of invariant to choices, okay? Um, all right, so then we're gonna get one over Q, all right? Um, and then sort of everything on that term that's not Q on the, on the right. So mu log of lambda, gamma, and R. It's just, it's just linear. Gamma and R. All right, so this is our equation here. Uh, okay. Um, and then, yeah, okay, so we got these two equations. Okay, and then I guess, what's the best way to... Okay, so there, there's, there's, you know, there's there different approaches that you can take. So one is... Um, the the standard Ramsey style approach. We want to get rid of mu. We're gonna somehow, uh, uh, you know, um, do that by uh, finding the growth rate of mu and sort of matching it up across these two equations. Okay, because in the second equation, it's clear how you, you can solve for the growth rate of mu. Okay, just by dividing by mu and, and moving stuff over. Um, on the first equation, it's it's like before you, you can take the growth rate of that equation, okay, and then you'll get some thing that gives you the growth rate of mu. Okay. It's it's kind of ugly because you're gonna get the growth rate of one over one minus r, which could be you know, could be a little dicey, all right. Um but it's not the worst actually. Okay, and then uh well let me let me try this. Now I'm trying to decide if there's an if there's a yeah. Um, now, in this case, there's also some substitution that you can do. All right. Uh, let's see. How do we do this? So, 
you can see, okay, let, let's do, we're going to do one substitution and then we're going to do that growth rate. Okay, so the substitution is, you know, that, that this right-hand term here looks a lot like this term. Okay, uh, it's, it's got like an extra R. Okay, so, so this is, um, this is, you know, if you sub in these two, you'd get, you know, you hear you get R over one minus R basically, okay? The other thing you can do, which is a little counterintuitive, it actually works a little bit better, is say, okay, well, one over Q, you can actually sub in that here. Let's say one over Q is equal to mu log of lambda gamma one minus R, okay? And the advantage of that is it, it gets rid of Q because Q, it, it gets rid of Q and it, it, it introduces uh, proportionality uh, to mu. In, in the entire right hand side and actually stuff cancels even more okay so uh we're gonna do that we're gonna say one over q is actually equal to uh mu log lambda gamma uh, one minus r sorry one minus r okay that's subbing in and then the second term you know it's the one that was already there mu log of lambda gamma r which actually even more conveniently exactly can't, you know, these, the R's are going to cancel. So it's just something times one minus R plus something times R. It's just now something, which is the something in this case is mu log of lambda times gamma. Okay. And then on the left-hand side, uh, I'm going to get row mu minus mu dot. Okay. So um, that's what we get. And then I'm just going to go up here. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's what we get. Okay, so, um, you know, let, let's let's summarize this. So we get rho mu minus mu dot is equal to mu. Okay, all right, so so this is kind of did, did it, uh, slightly counterintuitive substitution. If, if you didn't do that, you'd still get there. In the end, you just take a different route. Okay, this one just happens to be a slightly easier, okay? Um, and and this is what we get. All right. So so now we're in a position where we can we can do sort of Ramsey style elimination of mu. Okay. But really we're we're in a Hyao position here because we've reached the end of the page and I need I need to do some lassoing. Which I am now apparently prone to do. Okay, and then uh so all we need, you know, I crowd these equations in here so that I can just you know, do a single lasso. Efficient, efficient lasso. This is that. That's actually that's probably an econometrics thing. Efficient lassoing or something like that. Um, but we're taking it more literally here. Okay, so put that there. What that is. Okay, so so this is these are our equations. All right. Um, okay, and so uh, it, you know, it's, it's sort of a uh, at this point. Okay, we can. Uh, we're gonna take a derivative and we're gonna get an R dot term. Okay, and there's always a question, are we gonna are we gonna entertain the notion of an R dot that, that R can be changing over time? Okay. Um or are we gonna just assume it's zero? I'm gonna let it be non-zero because maybe the social planner does something different. Maybe this time is different. It's not, but maybe it is. Okay. Um uh yeah, this is, I feel like the, this is, there's a good arrested development meme for that, which is where Tobias is like, you know, sometimes pe somehow people trick themselves into thinking that it's different, but it, it never is. Okay. So uh, in this case, you know, any of these models we're looking at, you, you just get a, a immediate steady state outcome basically. Okay. And it, and the reason it's simple is that, that why would it depend on Q? What, what could you say about Q to make it? It's like, oh, Q is greater than five then R is going to be this. It's, you know, there's no, Q is just a totally dimensionless space. Okay. So it, it's, there's no focal point. Okay. And so it, it's, it would be hard to say why would R vary? Okay. Um, okay. But let's, let's, let's entertain it anyway. So, uh, so we're going to kind of take growth rates going to the right here. Okay. What's the growth rate of <clears throat> that left-hand side term? Um, well, I think, I feel like this should be, yeah, okay, so it's, okay, the, the growth of the left-hand left side term is, it's the derivative of itself, 
over uh, the value itself. Okay, so the derivative is going to be minus r dot over 1 minus r squared, but then actually you're going to get a del minus. So you get a minus from the fact that it's it's 1, one minus r raised to the minus 1, but then there's a minus inside. Okay, so you get a double minus, all right, divided by the value itself, which is, act, you know, so, so you know, it's 1 divided by 1 over 1 minus r. And so some of, some of those, that's going to cancel the partially this 1 over 1 minus r squared. Okay, so that's, well, we'll, we'll simplify it in a second. Um, the left hand side, okay, well, let's simplify it now. So that means you know it's r dot over one minus r basically. That's what you get for the, the growth rate of the left hand side. And the growth rate of the right hand side is well it's just that's that's simple. That's mu dot over mu plus q dot over q, which is just g. Okay, and then uh gamma and long line they're not moving, right? So those are zero. Alright, so that's our growth rate equation for the right hand side. And then I guess, you know, if you want, you can, we know that G is log of lambda tau, which is log of lambda gamma r. So this is log of gamma r. Okay. And that's all sort of nice and, and self-contained. All right. Um, we still got that mute that mu dot over mu floating around. Okay, so that's what we're gonna deal with right now, right? Um, so this one's, this this is easier, okay? Because we can just solve for mu dot over mu kind of directly algebraically, okay? And we're gonna get basically rho minus, what? Rho minus log of lambda gamma. Okay. Um, All right, okay, so now it's just take that mu equation and plug it in up on the right-hand side. And we're gonna have an entirely self-contained, self-propelled, autonomous, AI-powered uh, equation for R. Okay, so this, you know, this the first two terms, rho minus log of lambda are just plugging in for that mu. And then we got the second term floating around there. Okay. Uh, so that's our equation. Okay. And then we can, we can simplify it a little bit. Okay. So this is going to be uh, what's going to be rho minus log of lambda, basically combining these two equations and such. Okay. Um, well, actually, it's not good that we want to do that, actually. So, but, but yeah, so, so now we're going to, the, the trick here is I just want to turn this into a quadratic form. Okay. So it, it's clearly quadratic in R because if I move that one minus R over, it's going to multiply by the existing R. Okay. So it's, it's the same looking thing as before, some kind of quadratic in R, which gives us that shape where we have, you know, two different intersection points. Okay. Um, yeah. So that, you know, I guess probably the best way to do it is, you know, keep this over here for now. Okay. And uh, factor out, um, you know, log of lambda times gamma. Okay, so then we'll get um, uh, you know, rho over log lambda times gamma minus one plus r. Okay, that's just in that first equation. Okay, so that's. That's the thing. Um, and then uh, and I actually could move over this too. Okay, and then yeah, so I think uh how did I last time? Yeah, so it's usually I try and write it so that it's r minus something times r minus something, so we can see the sign of the, the quadratic. Okay, so here in this case it'd be a you know, minus uh <clears throat> r minus one times r uh, minus this thing, one minus rho over log lambda gamma. All right, which is our, that's our r star. Okay. We still need the log lambda gamma term. 
Yeah. Yep. Right. Um, and then I can just, you know, the most, you know, sort of compact way. Okay. So don't forget log lambda gamma. And then we got r minus one. And then r minus r star. Where r star is equal to one minus rho over log. All right. So that's, that's our statement there. Okay. Um, So this puts us where we were, you know, sort of to an analogous position, okay, in the sense that if we, you know, think about um, uh, sort of zero one R space, okay, this thing's zero at one, it's downward facing, okay, um, at zero, it's some negative number, okay. So it's gonna look like this. Ah, that didn't work. That's not good, but it's not the worst. Okay, um, it's gonna look like some kind of quadratic, and so here is our star. Okay, and so um, same dynamic. It's it's unstable. Okay, has has a equilibrium or has has zero points at at our star and at one. It's unstable. Uh. So if you don't set it R star, you're either going to go to one, in which case, well, I never really did prove that things are not going to go there, but let's just say they don't, okay? Um, you're going to go to R equals one, in which case you don't do any production, in which case things get kind of funky, and we're just going to say that we don't want to deal with that. You're, yeah, you, and um, I forget what the, uh, yeah, I mean, so so we'll, we'll you, you would go down a similar road to what you, the road that we went down before. Okay, and we'd get some condition about what's happening to consumption, but let's just say we don't go there, right? Um, and then uh, the other side, you go to our, you go past our equal zero, you just blow right through it, means which is just not possible. Okay, so so you're gonna you're gonna just hang out exactly at our star. Okay. Um, all right, and so that's it. All right, so so you you will get this R star. Okay, and then from there, just work backwards. That means that tau star, which is gamma times r star, this innovation rate is going to be gamma minus rho over log of lambda. And that means that g star, which is log of lambda times tau star, is going to be, you know, log of lambda times gamma minus rho. Which actually, I think it looks pretty nice. Okay, so um, and, and if you want, it, you know, basically, log of lambda times gamma is the maximum possible growth rate that you could achieve. If you put all of your people into research, they'd each have pro you'd have one of them in research. They have productivity gamma. They produce um, growth sort of at a, at a factor log of lambda. That would be your growth rate if you you put everyone into research. Okay, but because you're not infinitely patient. Okay, if you were infinitely patient. With row equals zero, you would do that, okay? Uh, if you're not infinitely patient, then you're going to do less than that, okay? And at some point, if you get really impatient, you're just not going to do any research at all, and you're going to hit zero, okay? So that's the that's the intuition. I mean, it, it makes sense, okay? Um, and uh, and I guess the interesting thing though is uh, how does it differ from our equilibrium? Okay, so let me just Where's our equilibrium? Yeah, so our, our equilibrium, let's let's recall that. Okay, I guess, but you know, so so for now, what's so what's important is this growth rate. Okay, now now what I want to do here is compare the social planners problem to what we found in the equilibrium. Okay. We could compare R, we could compare tau, we could compare G. They're all proportional to each other by by parametric constants, so it, it's going to give us the same answer. Um, let's do G. I, it, it's just a, it's algebraically slightly easier. So we'll, and it's kind of the thing you know that's what people care about. That's what the number. That's what the you know, GDP growth. That's what people are always quoting. Uh, politicians care about it. People care about it. So we're going to compare things in terms of growth rates. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, yeah. Now the, I guess. You know, I think I think I forget 
you know, I, I've not been super consistent when I'm calling things, but actually let's call let's call star is equilibrium and then hat is social planner. Okay, because the social planner has a special hat that says social planner on it. It's like uh, it's like black, okay, got like that thick rim thing, and then like white capital social planner. Right? That's the social planner hat. You like it? I would I, I would actually wear top hat. It. you want a top hat. I think it's a top hat that oh. still has print on it. Yeah. That's an interesting concept. Now, okay, so page page is solidly in the I don't know what I don't know what those caps are called, but whatever the thing I originally described. Uh I would I would wear that. Who would who would wear a social planner's hat of the first variant? Social planner's hat variant number one. Okay. So that okay, you guys don't want a social plan? All right. You you trust the market? Okay, fine. Um okay, and then Garrett, you're you're in top hat social planner. Okay. Oh, yeah. Not a cowboy hat. The cowboys, not, they're not really social not planners. They're they they're not. have that independent streak. Yeah. That's right. Okay, fair. Um <laughs> no, you know, but you know what I actually here here's look, hear me out here. I think a social planner hat has the original one that I described. I think the Walrasian auctioneer, however, will <laughs> have a top hat because they need to be visible. They're out there calling out prices, right? Maybe that maybe that's how we should break it down. The auctioneer has a top hat. What? Okay, we can let's 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 ponder this. Okay, let's just put everybody in the top hat. You know, uh, <laughs> I think everyone should have their own hat. Everyone should have their own hat of their own choosing. Uh, but if you guys have ideas about social planners hat, think about it. Next class, we can have a little discussion about it, right? Uh, but for now, let's just let's just assume the social planner has some kind of hat. The circumflex, I think it would be called in, in like classical terms. Okay, so um, all right, so that's the social planner uh, uh, G hat, and then G star. I'm gonna say is is equilibrium. Okay, uh, what was G star? G star is I'm gonna copy this out of the notes. Well, okay, it's it's uh, so so just to re to recall from from the notes or from the, the long form notes that I'm, that I'm reading off here, the tau star that equilibrium. Okay, so these are just for like consistency's sake. I'm gonna go back and make all these hats. Okay, so these are all hats now. At at. And hat, but not hat star. Okay, so um, all right. So so these are these are all G G hat and and everything like that. Okay, now uh, tau star. Okay, was this? Remember, it was something like this. Uh, gamma plus one. Okay, was that okay? And if we if we throw on a factor of log of lambda. Okay, so remember. In either case, the log of lambda gets you from tau to uh, g. Okay, so we're going to log of lambda over lambda times um, <clears throat> gamma lambda minus 1 minus rho. Okay, so these are our two outcomes. The social plan are very elegant, I would say. No fractions, no parentheses, no nothing. Except for the one from the log. Um, and the, the whereas the, the equilibrium is a little more complicated. Okay, but um yeah, so so these differ, that's for sure. Um they may not differ that much, okay, because there's there are some things that you know sort of we would expect to be similar. Okay, so uh think about let me make sure I get this right. Yeah, I mean um Think about the log of lambda. For small lambda, that's going to be approximately equal to lambda minus one. Okay, because if, if lambda is one, the log of lambda is zero, and uh, lambda minus one is also zero. And and the logarithm, uh, if you take a Taylor expansion around one, it, it's approximately linear linear with slope one. Okay, so so it's. Uh, uh, and but then there's that offset. So so if to, to a first order, those two are are the same. Okay. Um, and then they uh, over time the log of lambda obviously is sublinear. Okay. Uh, whereas lambda minus one is, is perfectly linear. Okay. So so they, they for small lambda though we would expect those two terms to look similar. Okay. And so here 
if you look at you know this term and let, let's even let's reverse the order so that's you know it's lambda minus one times gamma okay so here you look inside that parentheses for small lambda those that's a pack that's going to be about equal to that g hat term right okay but then there's this 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 factor on the front okay uh you know and so so for small uh lambda that factor on the front would will look like lambda minus one over lambda okay which is actually profit the profit level it's in it okay so um <clears throat> and uh yeah uh, but but it is true that that even will will be approximately one. Sorry, no, that would be approximately zero for for small lambda. Okay, so uh, it's not clear that we're gonna you know it, even if you entertain that small lambda approximation, okay, then what you end up with is on the social planner side something, and then on the, the equilibrium side you end up with something that's rather small times that thing. Okay, so. Um, yeah, so so for small lambda, doesn't seem like things are working out. And then for for large lambda, okay, uh, it, you know, you're you're gonna get um. Actually, I don't know what you get for large lambda. Let's find out. Okay, uh, so the approach I'm gonna take here is attempting to plot both of these things. Okay, I'm gonna attempt to plot. Uh, so so the the rationale is. Rho kind of looks the way it goes into this thing is is pretty similar. Okay, you subtract rho. Okay, gamma also kind of similar. The, the main thing seems to be lambda. Okay, lambda is the thing that seems to determine largely the relative values of, of g hat and g star. So so one approach is to say, well, let's look at these things g hat and g star as functions of lambda and see where that takes us. Okay, so we'll get sort of a qualitative look at, at how these differ and, and when one is greater than the other. Okay, so um, lambda equals one. Not a great case for kind of like growth because uh, in either case, right, you're going to get, uh, you know, in the social planners case, it's going to be minus rho. So you're already going to hit, you're already going to hit zero. Uh, and in the equilibrium case, this is going to be also minus rho times well, actually, no, this is going to be well. You're going to hit zero anyway. It doesn't really matter what it is. You never get there. Okay. They, so, so we've we've hit zero. Well, nine is is one. There's no growth. Okay. Um, now, at some point, you decide to start having positive growth. Sort of as a social planner, you decide, or the equilibrium it arises. Okay. Um, and uh, that point is going to be in the case of the uh, uh, social planner, it's going to be when the log lambda hits rho over gamma. Okay. In the case of the equilibrium, it's going to be where lambda minus one hits rho over lambda, rho over gamma. Sorry, lambda minus one. And we already talked about how lambda minus one is, is greater, okay is greater than uh, log of lambda. Okay, so I'm going to do like a micro plot over here. Okay, here's one. Okay, lambda minus one is just a linear unit linear function. Okay, log of lambda looks like that and then peels off. This is what we're dealing with. And then um, of course log of lambda also looks like this. So, so lambda minus one is a is a is a separating hyperplane, I think, maybe. Okay. Uh, uh a, that touches log of lambda at one. Okay, but it's always greater than it. Okay, so that's that's for 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 either case, it's always greater than it. Okay, so um that's what we're dealing with here. Okay, and so that means <clears throat> that lambda minus one is going to hit that threshold first. The threshold is rho over gamma. For the social planar, you need log of lambda to hit rho over gamma. For the in the equilibrium, you need lambda minus one to hit rho over gamma, right? So if you think about um, that's our threshold, okay? This is rho over gamma. We're going to hit that, you know, here. And, and the way I drew it is not great, but, you know, let's say it looks more like this. We're going to hit it earlier for the equilibrium. Okay, you can, you can 
map down that critical point. Where do you hit positive growth? Okay, so you're actually going to hit positive growth uh, for the uh, you know for G star. You're going to jump off that that x axis first. Meanwhile, in that domain, G hat is going to continue to be zero, and then at some later point, it's going to jump off the x axis. Okay, so that means that there is a range actually in here where you have positive growth in equilibrium, but it's inefficient. That it would be efficient to not have growth. Which is, and maybe that's, those are parameter values that are not reasonable. Okay, I don't know, All right? But but that's that's one result that you get, that it is possible to have too much innovation in the equilibrium, okay? Um, yeah, okay, and so, uh, and then I guess, uh, well, I'm at 45 here, but let me, let me, just, let me just finish this, I'll, I'll go like two minutes over, okay? So um, <clears throat> what happens as you progress forward, okay? So in the case of the social planner, it's going to look like a sort of a shifted logarithm function. Okay. So that's, I don't know, something like that. Okay. Um, that's G hat. Okay. And then uh, I should probably make this. So this is going to be larger at some point. So let me Draw it more like that. Okay, so I got some room to work with in G star. Okay, and then uh, uh, for G star. Okay, um, so so G star. Let's see. Um, we need to think about what what happens as lambda becomes large. Okay, so in that case, we're looking at the log of lambda over lambda. Okay, so what 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 happens? So the log of lambda over lambda as it becomes very large. Well, um, that's actually going to go to zero because the log of lambda is sublinear. Okay, but but actually, um, if if you should I say this? If if you factor these two terms together, okay. Uh, you're going to get lambda minus one over lambda, which is going to converge to one, and you're going to get lambda. So, so basically, this is this is going to zero, but this is growing. So you need to actually multiply them together to see what the net effect is. And so you're going to get that. That's basically going to converge to to the log of lambda, although it's going it's going to be less than log of lambda eventually. Okay. So, um, and then that second term. Uh, the second term is in fact going to go to zero. Okay. So, so in the limit, I should I say this in the limit, the first terms are going to look similar. Okay. But the second term is going to go to zero. Okay. So actually in the limit, the large line limit, the equal area is going to be too big as well. Okay. And so essentially what's going to happen this. Okay. Let me, let me just redraw this graph. To show that okay so what's going to happen is you got some thing here and you're going to have some region where you kind of like could have this is a wonky graph you're, you're actually going to have the possibility you know of, of having uh that standard under investment okay g star in in this region here but then for small and large lambda you're going to have over investment okay my graphing skills are not great to, to good enough to capture this, but basically, you know, you can show basically for, for, for small lambda and for large lambda, actually G star is going to be bigger. You're going to have too much innovation in equilibrium, but then it is possible. And even I would say likely that there's an intermediate zone where you have that sort of a little bit, possibly more intuitive result that, uh, uh, the, that there's too little innovation in equilibrium. Okay. So, um, it's just, and it's because there's these different, there's two different forces. Or the, you have the time horizon effect, okay? And you have sort of like this business stealing effect where you have inefficient churn, okay? And when lambda is small, you get a lot of inefficient churn, okay? Uh, and as you get larger, it becomes sort of more the, the time horizon thing, and then it kind of flips at the end, okay? All right, so, so I'm over time here. I'll, I'll let you folks go.